mindset, uh, we want to acknowledge the land on which we gather today. So we'll take a moment and you should be able to see on your screen the land acknowledgement and I'll read it out loud for everyone as well. So while this program is happening digitally, today I want to acknowledge that I'm physically situated on Anishinaabe territory, the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Adawa, and the Potawatomi. And today, the Anishinaabe of the Three Fires Confederacy are represented by Walpole Island First Nation, and we want to state our respect of the historical and ongoing authority of Walpole Island First Nation over its territory. And thank you for allowing us to meet and meditate and gather on your beautiful land. Um, so just a, a quick little agenda, what you can expect for today. We will go into kind of our, our first meditation uh, part, the first part of our program, followed by uh, a more close looking of an artwork that will be of inspiration for us today. Um, so Derek, our special initi initiatives coordinator, will be leading the first part. And Michaela Muldoon, uh, who's on our programming team as well, will be leading the art looking portion of the activity today. Of course, we encourage you to participate in the chat. Uh, if you have a question or if you notice something in the artwork that you'd like to share, we want to hear from you. So feel free to uh, activate the chat as well. So with that said, I'll pass it over to Derek and I'll mute myself and kind of fade into the background and I'm looking forward to this first activity. So Derek, over to you. Thank you so much, Sophie, and hello everyone. So yeah, Derek Carl Bizzo here, use they, them pronouns exclusively. And as Sophie said, your special initiative coordinator. And my special initiative today <laughs> is to get us into a nice mindful space to enjoy some of the artwork that will be shared. And so I wanna welcome you to uh, find a comfortable seat. Your seat could also be laying down. Uh, whether you are laying down or sitting up, we wanna take a dignified uh, posture. And so laying out nice and long or sitting up nice and tall, feeling our sitting bones pressing into the floor or the ground or the chair or wherever it is we are seated and allowing our bodies to rest. We're gonna do some mindful breathing and you can do it sort of at your own pace, whatever feels comfortable, easy breathing. If it starts shallow, that's okay. If you're starting to take nice full breaths, that's good too. Just noticing, paying attention to the process, the quality of your inhalation, and your exhalation. Your hands can be resting on your lap, at your side, or maybe because we're focusing on our breathing today, you might place them on your belly or around your chest, your lungs, so you can feel your body expanding as you breathe in. And then feel it pressing in, collapsing as you exhale the diaphragm pressing all the air out. Perhaps we'll start with taking a nice deep inhale in all together and then exhale through the mouth. Whew. A little sigh, letting some tension go. We'll do a couple breaths like this. So nice long deep inhale and then exhale. Oh, you can make a sound, you can let it go out quiet, you can be a little bit loud as you exhale, letting all that tension flow out. One more time, inhale. Oh, let it all out. And then returning to some nice natural. Inhale and exhale. We'll try to let our breaths be nice and deep, but don't force it. So keeping it still natural. 
And as we spend the next few moments together breathing, let's notice the sensations as we fill up with breath, our belly filling, our bodies expanding. And as we exhale, feeling the belly moving down and in, pressing all the air out, maybe even using the muscles to press the air out and then filling back up. Gently and firmly full of air and then emptying of air. If you find your mind wanders, just bring it back gently to your breath. It's bound to happen. <laughs> Our brain's a really good thinking organ. It does its job so well, always thinking. And today we want to think or draw our attention to our breath. So just coming back to noticing and being aware of our inhalation and our exhalation. And I want to encourage you to continue breathing as I share just a few words for us to think about and reflect on as we're noticing our breath and noticing the air as it comes into our body and as it leaves our body. And we're gonna focus a little bit on air as a theme. The air that's all around us, the air that comes into our bodies as we inhale and breathe in, and that leaves our body as we exhale and breathe out. Perhaps you can feel if your windows are open or the fans in the room, a bit of a breeze, a bit of a wind. Noticing the air that's touching our skin Perhaps the sound, if your eyes are gently open, the sight. There's only one air. It's the same air if it's within us or outside of us. What we draw in is simply borrowed for just a few moments. And then we can't hold on to air. In fact, <laughs> it's only by letting it go never holding on to it, that we're able to, to live, to survive, to thrive. It's allowing for this rhythmic flowing, the in and the out, the inhale and the exhale, this dynamic process that alivens our bodies, that animates our being. And it's that thing that's always with us from our very first breath, coming fresh out the womb. <gasps> <gasps> To the very end, that last breath that leaves the body as the body then rests, no longer animated. So breathing and air are really sort of like our closest friend, our constant companion throughout this brief yet long and perhaps wonderful, hopefully wonderful <laughs> life. And with daily meditation practices, it can help us to develop a spirit of contentment which is really the main source of a more lasting and dependable happiness. Mindfulness can't fix really social problems and many issues we face in our lives, but it can help us maintain a sense of our place, right? With our breath. And then with each other, because we're all kind of doing the same thing, breathing in and breathing out. taking a moment just for a couple more breaths and allowing ourselves to try to keep our awareness just on our breath again. Breathing in and breathing out. If your eyes are closed, open them downcast towards the floor. Noticing our legs, maybe our arms, our hands, our bodies. And take a moment, bring your hands up to your chest and just say a little thank you. Oh, thanks for working lungs, <laughs> best you can, right? 
and, uh, and returning to our time together as we get taken on a little journey by our colleague, Michaela. I'd like to welcome you, yield the floor. Thank you very much, Derek. That was lovely. That was wonderful. I got lost in it, almost forgot that I was uh, one of the leaders of this little Mindful Monday and uh, forgot that I was actually, yeah, I, I felt like a participant, like an attendee. So thank you for that. And thank you, Sophie, for the land acknowledgement and the introduction. So let's move on to the next slide. Today's artwork is Grass is Blowing by Joanne Rothfels. So this is in keeping with the element of air. That's our element of the week for Mindful Monday. So Joanne Rothfels, just to give you a little bit of background on the artist, she was born in BC in 1923. So she's almost a hundred years old now. And she's a Canadian etcher, painter, and author and art educator as well, a multifaceted human being. Um, you may also know her as Jo Rothfels or by her maiden name, Jo Manning. Um, she went by both. So she was um, a pretty, you know, not as well known as say group of seven members, but she, she's actually very highly lauded. She's had many solo exhibitions in Canada, many group shows internationally, and she's won many international awards as well. So get, let's give a little mental round of applause for, for Jo for all of her accomplishments over her long and I'm sure very fulfilling life. Um, and now I'd like to, to turn us back to the artwork itself. So Sophie, if you go to the next slide for a closer look at the etching here. So let's look at this, this gorgeous picture of movement here. You can almost feel, you can almost hear these grasses blowing in the breeze. And it's interesting because this is a very Canadian landscape here. This is something that you could find almost anywhere in Canada, a very familiar sight for us all, I'm sure. But when it's rendered like this with the dark pencil or uh, pen markings here, the etchings, it's very striking. Um, and something that we might not have paid a heck of a lot of attention to before suddenly becomes a thing of almost fierce beauty. And with this, this motion of the air, as we look at this image, I'd like to, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge air because I think that we, we take it for granted more than we take the other elements for granted. So, you know, when we, when we think about earth, we notice it because we're walking on it all the time. And we remind ourselves to be grateful for the food that we eat, which much of which grows from the earth or is feasted upon by animals that we in turn eat. We love to look at the trees and the other lush vegetation that grows from the earth. And when we think about fire, we love our bonfires during the summer and the fall. We love our birthday candles on our cakes and the scented candles. We all go nuts over the scented candles, right? And we love our fireworks and we love the sun that gives our planet life every day. And we just beg for the sun when it hasn't been out for a while. Even if it just hasn't been out for a day, we want our sun back. And when we think of water, we drink that to replenish ourselves and we notice how cool and refreshing it is. We love to relax as we cleanse the day from our skin and from our hair in the shower. We love to go swimming, especially in this area of the world during the season. We recognize the rain that feeds our crops and we acknowledge that when we, we cry, it's because of a great deal of emotion. You know, we laugh so hard we cry, that, that means we had a great laugh. We were, would move to tears when we see someone get married or a child being born, or even just like the simple kindness from one human being to another can move us to tears sometimes. And when we feel upset and we cry, we feel so much lighter afterwards for that release. So we love all of our elements, but we take for granted what is perhaps the most essential one or the one that we could not survive without for the, the longest period of time. And that's air, because every moment, every breath we take is, is ensuring that we continue to live. As Derek said, we have, to, uh, we have to expel it from our bodies and take it in again continually in order to thrive and to survive. But let's go beyond just the, the bare essential of air giving us life and think about the other 
blessings of air and maybe keep in mind Derek's meditation too as we think about this kind of combine these these dwellings on air so think of how restorative it is just to let out a sigh when you're in the middle of a long work day sometimes even just that small release of air eases the pressure in your chest eases the stress and same with a sigh of contentment that you take at the end of the day when your work is done and you lie down in bed and you stretch yourself out. Just that sigh of contentment that goes like, ah. and that's not just an expression of joy. There's, there's an amount of joy in just doing that as well. And think of the way as with their expeditation, the air feels moving into you when you breathe in and the light coolness of it. It's the perfect temperature when it enters your body. And think of the breaths you take when you exercise. If you do the kind of exercise that um, really makes you exert yourself, how you need to keep that steady rhythm in through your nose, out through your mouth, just to let your lungs stay well as you feed your body the exercise that it needs. And think of the deep, even peaceful breath of someone sleeping and how that can lull you to sleep too, make you feel safe. Think about cool breezes during these hot summer days when we're all sticky from the humidity and what a blessing it is just to feel the movement of air against your skin and through your hair and your clothes. It's as refreshing as splashing in cool water. And think about when you were a kid and how there always seemed to be something extra special and exciting and magical about when you were playing and there were high winds outside, like the wind wanted to play with you too. It was like the wind might pick you up and carry you away into the skies. You'd run and you'd flap your arms like maybe that would help you take off. And when you would run, the only sound you could hear was the wind rushing in your ears, that rushing sound. It would sweep its cool fingers through your hair and your friend's hair and ruffle everyone's hair and just leave you all looking wild and strange and funny. And when you all laughed at each other and the way you looked all silly with your hair a mess, the air that you would expel from your lungs would kind of match the wind, the energy of the wind. And think not just about how it is during the summer, but how the wind translates through the other seasons as well. So the blustery winds of autumn, scattering the crispy leaves everywhere, the way you hear them rattling against the sidewalk or the road as the wind drags them down there. And then think again of how alive the air makes you feel in the winter when it's crisp and brisk and you just, just take a big breath in. I know the air sometimes hurts our faces in the winter, but it can really be restorative when you just draw it into your lungs. And then think about the gentle breezes of spring. And I know lately the breezes have been known for scattering, scattering uh, poplar floof everywhere. And that's kind of an allergen for, for many people, but it still looks really magical if you just, you know, ignore the allergen part for a little bit. Just think of how magical it looks like uh, snow in summer with those little floofs floating in the breeze. There are just so many wonderful things that the air and the wind support every day. So I want you to close your eyes and picture a few of these things with me here. Just close your eyes and think about all the times you've seen the grasses like the ones in this photo blowing in the wind. Not photo, sorry, this etching blowing in the wind. Just the tall grasses and reeds near a pond just whooshing in the breeze. The uncut grass in a field or a meadow or a park whipping in the wind. That movement almost turns it into waves like the ocean. They're shining in the sunlight, all thanks to the wind. And keep your eyes closed and remember the rushing sound of the wind through the trees. It makes the leaves rustle and sparkle in the sunlight when they've got those two sides, one side's kind of green and the other one's silverish green. And think of how the trunks and the branches slowly sway and dance in the breeze. 
And a little tip for when you're out walking in nature, if you come across a tree with a lot of lichen on it, that's a sign that the air in that spot is very clean. So when you see lichen, just take a big, deep breath in and savor it. Maybe pause there and give yourself a few deep breaths near that tree and enjoy the same air that that tree and that lichen is enjoying. And keep your eyes closed still and think about wind chimes. Some of them have a melody, some of them are made to fit a scale, and others are just vibrantly jingly. A little bit of music mixing in with the sounds of nature, the sounds of the wind caressing the grasses and the trees and everything else. No. Keep closing your eyes and think of things that billow in the breeze, like laundry hung on clotheslines, giving a fresh scent to the air. Think about flags, like all the lovely pride flags we've seen around town this month. Just that gentle undulating motion of the fabrics held aloft by the wind. Think about the clouds moving through the sky on the wind. Sometimes we can see them passing over our heads very quickly, like they're alive and they're running and it's awe-inspiring. And other times the clouds just move at a more leisurely pace. Just think of all that movement and tie it back into the movement that you see in this image right here. It's all that same wind, that same force, that same energy of nature. Now, keep your eyes closed again, or uh, if you're, st if you still got them closed, keep them closed. If you've opened them, close them again. And just imagine now the birds, think about the birds flying in the sky. And they flap their wings or sometimes they just spread them and glide on the air currents. And I want you to imagine that for yourself now. You don't have to flap your arms to stay aloft. You just have to think it and you can float up into the air as high or as low as you want to. You can float right over the grasses like the ones that you see in this image. You can fly way, way high and join the clouds. And just think about where you would go and what you would see if you could fly. Maybe you would stay with the grasses, with that movement, with that fluidity. You are that ease and that fluidity of movement as you fly, the same as the wind, the same as the birds, same as the trees and the grasses. You are a part of nature. And even when you can't fly, which is in real life, just to remember that you are still a part of nature. We are all still a part of nature. Even when we try to um, shut it out in the form of shelter, in the form of becoming absorbed in our technology and our work, we can always go back to nature, always. We are always welcome back to it. Our air masses, they travel all around the world and the wind that was in Tokyo or the Sahara Desert or the Rockies or the beaches of the Caribbean will eventually reach us here and our winds will reach them. They'll reach them as they swoop through the grasses like the ones in this picture, through the trees, through the clouds. The winds will make their way around the world again and again. And they're going to bring with them the shouts of fun and the words of wisdom and affection and wondering the laughter, the energy, the substance, the life of the people and the parts of the natural world that they touch as they move. So as we're drawing to a close here, let's think about how every breath we take and every motion generates a bit of movement in the air that eventually becomes the wind or becomes part of the wind. And let's try to put the best of ourselves into that air. 
the essence of ourselves, our peace and our contentment in this moment. Because you never know where somewhere else in the world, someone might need the wind to carry that beauty their way and restore them. Just take a final few deep breaths. And if you're feeling kind of stiff from sitting or from lying down, just wiggle at your fingers, your toes, maybe your shoulders. Just generate that little bit of movement into the air. Let the air re-energize re uh, re you as you take energy in turn from the air. And thank you all for listening. I'm going to turn things back over to Sophie for the conclusion. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this piece and uh, that you were able to pay some attention as well when we were having that little close look to the beautiful etching marks I saw um, in the comments that people were, were very happy with the way that uh, the, the etching creates the movement in the picture. But uh, anyway, as I said, I will turn it back over to Sophie now, <laughs> Sophie Stern. Michaela, thank you so much for, for leading us through this work of art. I feel re-energized, I feel grounded. Um, it's often the most simplest works that really transport us to somewhere completely different. There's so much depth to it and there is a breath to this work, right? We can feel it, we can see it. Um, so thank you for leading us on that journey, for taking us to those places. You know, we haven't been able to travel and to see the ones that we love and to do things outside. <laughs> um, so it's always wonderful when we have that opportunity to kind of get out of our head and get out of those, those spaces and, and travel um, through our imagination. It was lovely. Um, so I'll go on to our little conclusion here. I wanted to say thank you everyone who is watching here in the webinar, everyone who's tuning in live on Facebook. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I'll switch over my screen to our website here at agw.ca where you can find a list of upcoming webinars and upcoming dates for Mindful Mondays. But, so the next one will be on July 5th at noon. So you can join us again for some meditation and mindful looking. You can also scroll down a little bit below and you can see all of the past Mindful Mondays. So you can always go back and revisit them. We have them linked directly here on our website or live on our YouTube channel as well. So you can see them in a bunch of different ways and different formats, wherever you get your information. But thank you again, everyone, for being here. We are right on time. And with that being said, thank you, Derek. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you to everyone. Have a great week. It's Monday. Here we are. Take a big, nice, deep breath in and out. And we've got this. It's going to be a great week. So take care, everyone, and see you next time at Mindful Mondays. Goodbye. <laughs>